In hash-based indexing, we have a collection of buckets and the hashing function. Buckets contain data entries. Data entries within a bucket can be sorted by search key value, or they could be not sorted. The sorted entries can help further enhance the search performance. But here, we assume that they are not sorted. Buckets each have one primary and some additional overflow pages chained to the primary page for that bucket. The hashing function maps the values in the search field into the buckets. Inserting hash-based indexing is as simple as applying the hash function and adding the data entry to the bucket. If there is no space for a new entry in the bucket, we allocate a new overflow page and put the data entry on that new page and add the page to the overflow chain of the bucket. To perform a delete of a data entry in hash-based indexing, we apply the hashing function to identify the correct bucket, locate the data entry by searching within the bucket, and we remove it. If the data entry is the last one within an overflow page, we remove that overflow page. The figure shows hash-based indexing with two hash functions. The data is sorted in a file hashed on age. Applying the hash function on age field identifies the page that the record belongs to. There is also a second index on salary that contains pointers to data records with search key values. As you can tell, the hashing function is an important part of hash-based indexing. The hashing function must distribute values uniformly across the buckets. Hashing function can be static. This means that the hash function is known when the file is created and the number of buckets is fixed. This can be a problem if the number of data entries grow or shrink. The growth is handled with chained overflow pages. However, if the size of the file shrinks, a lot of space will be wasted. The problem with the static hashing can be solved using rehashing. However, rehashing takes time and index cannot be used while rehashing is happening. Alternatively, we can have dynamic hashing such as extendable and linear hashing. Let's explore extendable hashing here, starting with our static hashing file shown in the figure. The bucket A in the figure is full. If we do not want to add overflow pages, a solution is to double the number of buckets and reorganize the file. But the problem with this solution is that if we double the number of buckets, the entire file should be reread and double the number of pages should be written to achieve this doubling of the buckets. However, we can instead use a directory of pointers to buckets and double the number of buckets by doubling the directory, but only split the bucket that has overflowed. To find the bucket for an entry, we apply the hash function, which is a modulo function in the entry. To insert as well, we apply the hash function on the data entry and add it to that bucket. For example, if we want to insert the data entry 13, applying the hash function, it would be directed to bucket B. And since there is a space, the data entry would be simply inserted. However, consider inserting entry 20. Applying the hash function, this should be added to bucket A. Bucket A is full. Therefore, we need to split the bucket and redistribute the contents of bucket A. Before seeing the results of the operation, I just want to mention two numbers in the current situation of the buckets. Global depth, which is two here, and local depth, which is also two for all of the buckets. 
Local depth of the hashed file indicates the D last bits of a binary number, with D being 2 here, and is kept as part of the header of the file. Local depth is also the D last bits of a binary number for each bucket. If a bucket whose local depth is equal to the global depth is split, the directory must be doubled. Going back to our example of inserting 20 to bucket A, and the split operation that we are expecting since these two numbers are both 2 and therefore equal. Let's see what happens. To add entry 20 to full bucket A, we we'll split the bucket, add bucket A2, and update the size of the directory to double the previous size. This increases the global depth to 3. This means that we need 3 bits to differentiate buckets. Note that many buckets will correspond to two of the directory elements and therefore have two pointers. However, those that use the doubling of the directory, which are bucket A and A2, will use all the three bits to map to the right bucket. After this, if buckets B, C, and D need a splitting, since their local depth is not equal to global depth, splitting can happen without doubling the directory. We're just adding the new bucket and using the directory elements accordingly. However, if bucket A or A2 run out of space. Since their local depth is again 3, which is equal to global depth, splitting would need doubling directory.